Hello and welcome back, it's DB2 time again. This time greetings from the Emperor's throne room. You see that behind me, it looks a bit broken, but uh, the focus uh, is on something else today and in the upcoming videos. Actually, it will be a bunch of videos because this would be one of the central, most important chapters in the whole DB2 course. It's about ordered indexes, so indexing structures in general in PostgreSQL and also in MonadaDB. But the focus will be first on the B plus trees, which are the ordered indexes that determine much of the query performance of a relational database system. Okay, so this is chapter nine, ordered indexes. And uh, we are focusing on B plus trees first, as the title already suggests. It, this will be the lion's share of, uh, of the chapter. There's also something to be said about the exploitation of order in MonetDB, but uh, the focus really is on PostgreSQL in the next few videos. Okay, so what, what's going on with these indexes? Indexes are indeed additional data structures maintained by the database system to support the rapid evaluation of predicates. All right, so we have seen that the evaluation of predicates can be done by sequential scan indeed. Okay, that would invoke the interpretation of the Boolean expression that makes up the predicate. And as long as the Boolean predicate yields true, the row in question would be admitted to be part of the result. But uh, as soon as we are dealing with really large input tables or with predicates that are expected to be evaluated again and again, uh, this row by row interpretation of predicates of Boolean expressions really doesn't cut it. We need a more is sufficient support for the evaluation of such predicates and thus for the efficient support of value based row access. All right, so row access in relational database systems can be done by RID, by RID, as you know. Uh, but user queries won't specify RIDs to access in our database. They will specify predicates that uh, restrict or constrain values in columns. So we need suffi sufficient support for the relation of value-based row access. Okay, and such queries would then also be used as the um, probe queries in this chapter. As you can see, this will be our probe query, probe query Q8 already, and it will be uh, posed against a table index that we will create in a minute. And here you see the predicate. You see the predicate i.a equals 42. If uh, we assume that this column i.a is indeed a primary key, then it, this is probably for reason. Users use column A to identify rows in column indexed. Who knows how many rows will be in, in table in, in, uh, in table index, I'm sorry. Who knows how many rows will be in table index? Millions maybe. But column A will be unique. Column, column A will be used to identify individual rows in this, in this table. And the system can expect a query workload, a typical mix of queries that is often containing predicates like this. I want to identify particular rows in my index table. I will use these value-based identifications, these value-based predicates to identify these rows. We better have efficient support in the database system to support just this type of particular predicate and indexes have been constructed that can support such queries. There is multiple type of indexes in relational database systems uh, implemented today. Hash indexes, which can essentially uh, uh, support uh, uh, ed, um, equality uh, comparisons like the one I've underlined here. But um, there's another type of index which is super prevalent and very versatile, very flexible in the type of predicates and it uh, it can support, and that's the B3 indexes. And these will be in focus in this course. We will not talk deeply about hash index in this course. This is just the focus that we have uh, chosen to have. Um, this doesn't mean that hash indexes are 
not present in PostgreSQL uh, or in MoneyDB for that matter, uh, please look up uh, documentation about PostgreSQL to also learn uh, about hash indexes. Our focus will be the B plus tree indexes, which can support this type of predicate. And as you can see, a whole family of predicates uh, that is uh, much richer than only just equality comparisons. All right, so let's see how we can get index support for such predicates. All right, so uh, in PostgreSQL and in most database systems, it actually would suffice to just create that index table. Okay, so you see it's one of our playground three column tables, but the focus will be on column A for now. Okay, column A has been designated as the primary key, as a column that carries unique not null values that we can use to identify individual rows in table indexed. And because this is uh, the chosen column in a sense, the DBMS will expect predicates of this kind. Because this is to be expected, uh, the DBMS will automatically in the background create the table as well as an index structure on this particular column A, a data structure that is really married, that is really tightly associated with table indexed. All right. Of course, uh, once we uh, insert row into table index or maybe delete rows into table index, that associate data structure, the index structure on column A, has to be maintained as well. This will happen automatically for us. We don't have to maintain the index uh, explicitly or manually. This is performed by the database system uh, in the background automatically for us. Okay. Um, the index that is uh, that is automatically created could also be created by us explicitly using this statement here all right so you can see uh, this is a create index statement that is indeed associated with the index table okay we also specify the column that we want to index all right and we also specify that internally b plus trees are the index structure that are that is to be used all right so at this particular point, we could opt for other internal uh, uh, implementations of index structures and uh, hash would be one such option. There are actually more options in PostgreSQL. Uh, interesting options indeed. Please have a look at them in the, in the uh, associate PostgreSQL manuals. You will find uh, uh, a myriad of interesting pointers and, and insights into indexing. But uh, we will focus on the B tree, B plus tree indexing structure in, uh, in PostgreSQL. All right. You see, just like tables, indexes are named structures, are named entities. Uh, and that makes sense because uh, there will be other instructions later, uh, other SQL commands that will refer to these indexes by name. So we better give them a name. And uh, in this course, uh, as also mentioned in the footnote on this slide, we will follow the convention to just use the table name and underscore and then the column name on which this particular index structure is being built. All right, so each column or maybe a group of columns, we will come to that in the next chapter, is, uh, uh, can be, can be uh, uh, the input to index construction individually. So there is not one index for, what, for a table, but there can be many indexes, uh, all particularly defined to support predicates on a particular column or group of columns. Uh, in this chapter, we will talk about indexes over single columns only, and we will add multi-column indexes into the discussion when we enter the next chapter. Okay. Um, whenever whenever um, the system now is evaluating queries over the table indexed, it will also be aware that there is this supporting index structure that can speed up, really rapidly speed up the evaluation of predicates on column A. So the system will do its best to really exploit the presence of the index whenever this seems profitable. So again, in SQL queries, we will not, we will not explicitly refer to this indexed A uh, uh, index structure, but the system will do its best to 
pick it up automatically whenever it thinks that uh, query evaluation can really benefit. Query evaluation speed can benefit from exploiting the index. So this is the point where we really benefit from the index. And uh, we hope to see really significant speed ups. And we can see them immediately when we switch over to the editor in a minute. Of course, there is the flip side of things. Whenever we update our index table, the associated data structure, the index underscore A index has to be maintained as well. As you can imagine, the index data structure will reflect the contents of column A in some fashion. If the contents of column A is, uh, is uh, modified, new values are being inserted, old values, uh, old values are being deleted or are being replaced then we have to also maintain the index data structure. And this is the flip side of things and really leads to additional work for the uh, database system. So there is, uh, there's a trade-off here. And the trade-off uh, really dictates that we are caref careful in our index design. Do we really need this particular index on column A and then a new index on B and on C and on D on every column that uh, is... Uh, present in our table, do we need index structure for all of these? Probably not. And if we create index structure for all of these columns, we will have the maintenance effort for all of these uh, index structures. So it's really, really good index design. Good index design is really a black art in database systems. And uh, uh, you can find endless discussions about this in the academic literature, in the web out there, in papers on good index design and so on. You find whole books devoted to, to the topic, good index design, which indexes to create or not to create are, is something that is uh, really super interesting and can really have a major influence on database performance. Okay, so uh, what do we expect? What do we expect when we uh, post queries now on the A column? So let's see. Let's have a simple select from where query on the index table. And as you can see, indeed, we are we are using a predicate here on this A column. This is an index column. All right. Okay. Um, so we would hope that the database system notes uh, notices the opportunity to use the indexed underscore a index in this particular case you see that in the specification of this probe query or any SQL query whatsoever we do not explicitly refer to the index it's supposed to be picked up automatically and indeed if we look at the plan that is uh, being proposed for this query q8 you can see that the plan looks different than it used to look. There is no sequential scan in there. Indeed, what we find is an index scan now, an index scan. Okay, and the index has indeed, uh, the index scan is indeed performed on the index underscore a index, on the index that has been defined for this particular column. All right. The system expects this query to only return one row, which is reasonable because we have an equality comparison on a primary key. Either this predicate will emit a single row or maybe no row at all. So that would be uh, a reasonable estimate here at this point. The index structure is of course uh, is of course tuned to support predicates of this particular kind. So this is the predicate that is a part of the query and it's also being used to guide the access into the index. This predicate, in particular, this constant 42 here, this is the guiding literal, the guiding constant that will be used while we navigate the index structure and try to quickly locate the rows, the rows I that qualify for this particular predicate. All right, so here in the plan after index cont, after index cont, you can see that uh, this has been identified as the part of the query the part of the predicate actually that can be efficiently supported by the index. In this case, it's the entire predicate, which is really good news for us. There is no residual extra predicate evaluation uh, effort involved in this query. Everything can be performed by this index scan. Okay, 
So this is also what's being said here in this bullet below. Okay, uh, this index scan seems to be very promising for the system indeed because a single row of results is being expected. This is a very picky, a very selective predicate. The index scan will deliver very few rows, maybe no rows, maybe only one row. All right, this is the case when the index scans are most effective. If we expect the predicate to deliver millions of rows, then visiting the index in addition to the table can be a waste of time. And we will see in, uh, in the upcoming slides and also in our experiments that there is a cutoff when the system decides, okay, uh, there will be so many rows returned, the index scan will be so uh, will lead to so much work and so much returning of results uh, that I'd rather not involve the index at all and simply just scan the table in which I will find these rows anyway. Okay, so but we will come to this uh, to this notion of selectivity and when it's really useful and promising to exploit an index, we will come to this in uh, in the upcoming discussion. Okay, so enough talking. Let's switch over to the terminal. And let's see uh, what we find there when we use indexes in PostgreSQL in action. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I've brought with me that index table, the index table that I've also used on the slides. And I've also populated it uh, already. I've already executed this particular command. You see that I'm inserting 1 million rows, 1 million rows into this index table. Uh, this is the index, the primary key column. And automatically, the system will have created um, a B, B plus tree index for us on this on this column A because it expects us to perform equality comparisons on this column A in the future uh, fr very frequently. Okay, I've also already inserted the rows of this particular table. So let's see uh, how the table state looks like now. Okay, so this is the three column table indexed. Okay, this is the primary key column. Implicitly, it's of course not null, the A column. Okay, and as you can see, not only this table structure has been created, but also an index structure has been created. Okay, it uh, has been created because uh, we have designated a primary key, the A column, and the system has decided to support accesses on column A using a B tree. All of this has been done automatically for us. Uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, unfortunately, PostgreSQL does not follow our naming convention of uh, naming the uh, indexes uh, as table name underscore column name. So let's do that. Let's enforce that uh, Let's enforce that uh, naming convention so that it fit, fits the rest of our discussion in this chapter. You see, there is this uh, SQL DDL command that I can use to simply rename, to simply rename the index, and I will do that now. Okay, and if we now look at the structure of the index, you see everything is the same, but the index has been renamed. Okay. All right. So uh, indexes are supporting data structures. They are data structures actually like tables. They are also made persistent by the database system. So they outlive one session of our database system. If we shut down the system and then power it up again, the index will be there just as well as the table will be there. Okay. As such, indexes are being stored as heap files, as paged heap files. If we look into the data directory of our PostgreSQL instance in the Scratch database, the Scratch database I'm using all the time, there will of course be a heap file for the indexed data table, but there will be also a heap file for the index underscore a index. All right. Also, the indexes are maintained in paged heap files. Okay. Um, we can even look at these. Uh, Look at the information about these uh, heap files using the the system catalog of PostgreSQL like we've done so many times before. Okay, so you see that I'm using this predicate on the PG class database catalog table to look up information about heap files whose names start with indexed. This is the case for the indexed um, for the indexed um, uh, table, but also for our index structure. Okay, so let's do that. 
Okay, indeed, two rows are returned. Uh, there is something called the index table and also the index underscore a index. And that this is a table we can see if we look at the rel kind column here, which uh, designates this entry as a relation, r relation, and this as an i or index. Okay, and you can see they are indeed living in separate heap files. These are the file nodes. We could look them up. Uh, in the in the data directory of PostgreSQL, and we will also look at the heap pages, the structure, the data that we find in the, on the heap pages of this index. It looks quite a bit different than the data tables, as you can imagine. All right. What we can also see is that the index table occupies almost ten thousand pages, and that the index data, the index structure, the B tree, is quite a bit smaller. And that's what we would hope for, that the supporting data structure that really guides us through the data jungle that uh, really leads us quickly to rows for which i.a equals 42, that this is a succinct data structure and uh, that it's not larger than the table itself, for example. And this is indeed the case. Index structures, if they are carefully designed, can be really compact. And that's good news. You also see that there is 1 million rows in the index table, the 1 million rows that we've inserted, and that all of these 1 million rows are indeed represented in the index structure. So all of the 1 million rows have their entry in the index structure, so all of the rows, value-based access to all of the rows can be, uh, can be indeed supported by this index, given that the predicate that we're using is really referring to column A. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's do, let's pose such a query that indeed refers to column A here, uh, the equality comparison with 42 on column A. Okay, so what will happen there? We are indeed uh, performing the query Q8 here, as you can see. We are do, using, using explain analyze. All right, so let's see how the plan uh, is, uh, lo looks. Uh, we, of course, hope for an index scan. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, an index scan, an index scan has been used. Automatically, the presence of the indexed underscore A index has been picked up, has been uh, noticed by the system, and has been exploited. You see that the system indeed expected a single row to be returned, and it, indeed a single row has been found while the query was executed. This is the predicate that was used to guide the search in the index and exactly how that search will be performed is the topic of upcoming videos. Okay, so then the execution time of the entire thing was really quick. You see that this is a really very quick a fraction of a millisecond has been uh, has been used to locate this one particular row, this particular one particular row with i.a equals 42. Okay, so thank you index scan for this rapid query relation. And it really makes a difference. It really makes a stark difference. Uh, let's temporarily disable index support. So let's pretend that there is no index underscore a b tree index present. Uh, does that mean we cannot evaluate this query? No, it doesn't mean that it does that's not meant at all. We can still evaluate this query, but we will have to use a sequential scan over the index table. And uh, for each row in that sequential scan, we would have to initiate Boolean expression evaluation to evaluate this particular predicate to detect whether i.a is indeed 42 and then emit the row or maybe discard it. So that should be way more effort, way more effort than using a dedicated guiding structure, the index structure that would immediately lead us to the matching rows. So let's do that. Uh, so just that we can appreciate the value of index scan. So let's uh, temporarily switch off all forms of index scanning inside uh, PostgreSQL. You see that I'm not only uh, disabling the index scan, but also it's its brother operator, the bitmap scan. We will men we will meet bitmap scan in a few videos. Okay, so these have been turned off now. All that's left uh, as an execution option for the system now is sequential scan. Okay, so let's 
perform the same query again using a sequential scan. All right. Okay, works. A sequential scan has been performed on the index table. You see no mention of the index underscore a b tree index. We have just not used it. It's present in the system, but we uh, we uh, disabled uh, ex exploit its exploitation. Indeed, uh, the sequential scan now has used the predicate evaluation, the expression evaluation, the interpreted expression evaluation to evaluate this filter predicate. Almost all of the rows couldn't qualify. And all of this took f almost 500 milliseconds. Please compare this execution time to this execution time. That's a factor of 10,000. I knew which option I would choose. All right, so let's quickly re-enable index scan support in the system. Because of course we want to benefit from this. This is awesome. So uh, indexes deserve uh, really a closer look in this course. And that's what we will uh, do in the upcoming videos. I hope you will be around uh, to have a closer look at index internals. Uh, see you then. Bye.